Greetings, J-Mods, Scapers, Random People. Woke up this morning, July 8th, 2019, to having three out of the five accounts you'll see in this video banned permanently for macroing without an appeal. I'm going to show you exactly what I've been doing. I don't really feel like I'm cheating and... You know, if, if in the end they say, oh, well, you're definitely breaking the rules and whatever, then ban all my accounts, please. The player you just listened to is known as Anti-Men, and he has a lot of experience being falsely banned on RuneScape. His story, along with those from many other multiloggers that I interviewed for this video, sheds important truth on the current state of Jagex's support system. How, if you're a legitimate player that succumbs to Jagex's imperfect anti-cheating system, the likelihood of you being unbanned is reliant on exposure and community support, rather than being able to go through their official support system, as you can in many other MMOs. I've interviewed four players, Samurai PR, Anti-Men, Zortrox, and Jim Shill. But before we get into their stories, I'm going to briefly thank the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. This is a product that I actually use, and it's a product that has saved my behind before as well. Let me tell you a little story. So if you've been around my channel for a while, you know I interview all sorts of cyber delinquents. And while I was making one of those videos, I was on this sketchy person's website. I noticed in the code that he had an IP logger tracking my IP address in real time. Had I not been on NordVPN, which changed my IP address by redirecting all of my internet traffic through the remote servers, that person would have been able to see the city and country that I'm living in, and worse, he could have executed a denial of service attack against me, dropping my internet offline, but because I was connected through NordVPN, none of that was possible. This guy thought I was connected from the United States when I'm actually Canadian, and if he tried to DDoS that IP address, guess what? It's a NordVPN server and they've got great DDoS protection, so nothing happens. I did a video three weeks ago about the big problem that RuneScape players face with respect to being attacked by DDoSers. You can lose items, you can lose your hardcore Iron Man status, I mean the list goes on. But if you've got NordVPN, you don't have to worry about it. And there's a bunch of other use cases too, like they've got unlimited bandwidth, there's 59 different countries you can connect to. If you're in Canada and you want to watch American Netflix, this makes it possible and vice versa. They've got a great deal right now on two year plans. You'll get a month free and a hefty discount. All you have to do is use my custom link in the description or coupon code crumb on checkout. It's a wonderful VPN and that's a wonderful discount. You're paying the price of two cups of coffee for each month. You won't find a better deal than that around. So. To this very day, if you go on the 2007 Scape Reddit and post the word anti-men, your thread or comment will be automatically hidden because the mods have set it up to be a banned word. On top of that, anti-men's own Reddit accounts have been shadow banned, which means nobody sees any of the posts that he makes in the RuneScape subreddit, whilst it's not obvious to him that he's even been banned. We don't have the intent behind the Reddit mods censoring Anti-Men in this way, but we do know that it came after he made a series of posts highlighting his innocence as a player, explaining that his accounts had been falsely banned, and asking Jagex to respond on the situation. See, Anti-Men started playing back in 2015. He's part of a niche community in RuneScape known as Multiloggers. These are people that play on sometimes 5 all the way up to 100 accounts at once. Back in 2015, Anti-Men was playing on just 12 accounts. He played for a couple of years, building his accounts up to the point where he could afford more bonds to create even more accounts to keep multi-logging on. By 2017, he was up to playing a total of 24 accounts at once. He didn't suffer any problems over this period of time. It wasn't until October of 2017 that 7 of Anti-Men's accounts got randomly banned. He tried appealing it through the official support system and they were all automatically declined. He couldn't talk to a person at Jagex. He couldn't even do a write-up about the situation in the ban appeal. Frustrated and desperate, Anti-Men took to Reddit. He made a post explaining his situation, giving proof of his legitimacy, but he didn't get the upvotes. Nobody stood behind him with their pitchforks demanding a response from Jagex and so his post never made it to the top page. It fizzled among all the other posts. In a last ditch effort, he took to Twitter, tweeting at JMods, trying to get one of them to personally look into his case. He had no luck. 
Frustrated, he quit the game for a year. He didn't make a return until September of 2018. At that time, he made 11 new Antimen accounts, and within 4 days, 7 out of 11 of those accounts were banned. At this point, he was absolutely certain that what he was doing was not against the rules. This is where his campaign to get a response from a Jagex moderator really started. He created a YouTube channel talking about and documenting his methods of gameplay. He made many posts on Reddit and they started to gain traction. For the first time, a Jagex moderator actually looked at what he was doing and made a comment about it. Check it out, here's what Mod Tyran had to say. What you've shown in this video isn't against the rules and wouldn't warrant a ban to be placed on your account. Regarding your banned accounts, we will review them within the coming days. And sure enough they did, and sure enough Antiman got all of those 7 falsely banned accounts reinstated. What Antiman didn't know at the time was that this would be the only interaction he would ever have with Jagex where they actually looked at his falsely banned accounts and reinstated them. From here on out, it was only downhill. Shortly after Mod Tyran actually looked into his accounts and unbanned them, he asked him if he could look into the original accounts that he had back in 2017 which were also falsely banned, but he was ignored. Now, despite this, Antiman kept playing the game all the way up until April of 2019. What eventually pushed him into permanently quitting the game is when he had three of his accounts get banned for training defense at Monks, and then three more of his main accounts get banned while he was doing Corporal Beast on them. Of course, no support from Jagex, and by this point Reddit had shadow banned him, presumably so he would stop being able to post that these false bans are happening. One thing about Antiman's case is that even though he posted a whole bunch on Reddit, he never got a Jagex mod smackdown. So typically, if somebody posts on Reddit saying that they got falsely banned, but they actually bought it or they deserve the ban in some way, and the thread gets really popular, a Jagex moderator will call them out say, hey no, you bought it, you did this, and you deserve that ban. With Antiman, they completely ignored the threads. The assumption from this is that yeah, Antiman was legit, he didn't bot, so he was unsmackdownable. So instead of rectifying the situation, Jagex chose to ignore it. That brings up another consideration. Jagex's official statement on their anti-cheating software is that they're able to accurately detect all bots. That is, their software is impeccable, it can't be wrong, and as such, if you get detected as a bot by it, ha, no way that it's a false ban. But what we have actually seen time and time again is that legitimate players do get banned. EVscape got banned on stream. Solo Mission suffered a false ban, Lynx Titan, the first player to ever max on the game, got falsely banned, and in all of those situations, because these players are of high notoriety within the community, they got the special privilege of a JMod looking into their situation and unbanning them manually. It's frustrating, really, and I want to get into more details, but first we're going to take a step back and look at what Zortox, another multi encounter had to say. Now, you've probably seen this guy hanging out at World 2 GE, decked out in full purple, surrounded by his alts. Zortrox has provided a lot of great insight for this video. So we're going to talk about one of his banned experiences in specific. He had created 6 accounts to train cooking on, and 5 out of 6 of them were banned just a few days later. So naturally he went to the appeal forum. He didn't want to overwhelm them with reports, so he submitted a ban appeal for just one account. Then a couple hours later, he realized, hey, you know what, I don't want to wait 28 days for this first appeal to go through, to just have to do it again on all my other accounts and wait that extra month. So at this point, he submitted a ban appeal on the other four accounts, and it's the response that he got to those ban appeals that is really interesting and sheds light on just how unpersonable Jagex's ban appeal system is. So the first ban appeal response came 10 minutes before the rest of them, and then the other four came at the exact same minute to his inbox. Each of his appeals was declined with the generic message, but an interesting note is that they were signed by different JMods, even though the emails arrived at the exact same minute. And this just leads me to believe that this is a fully automated process that they tried to kind of cover up by changing the JMod name instead of just being transparent and saying that it's an automated system. Of course, I don't work at Jagex, so I don't know if these are actually reviewed by people and then they just batch process out all the emails at once, sometimes companies do that, but I can't find anything saying that they do have a real person processing ban appeals, so it'd just be nice to know from Jagex if there's actually somebody that looks into them. So what does Zortrox do after he went through the official support system and it seemed like nobody actually looked into his case? Well, like most players, he took to Twitter. 
But despite his shenanigans in World 2, he's not a well-known player. And so finally, he resorted to going to the official RuneScape Discord servers and messaging every Jmod he could. He managed to get a reply from Mod Gambit, who didn't work support, but promised to look into his case. Zortrok said that it was taking a long time for Gambit to actually get around to looking into it, which was fair, he didn't work support, but Zortrox actually was friends with one of Mog Gambit's real life friends, and so he even had that person ask Mog Gambit again to look into Zortrox's case. And when Mog Gambit actually did finally get around to looking into Zortrox's case and ultimately unbanning his accounts, it was the day before he left Jagex. Zortrox said that that left an eerie feeling for him. This is a great story to illustrate the exceptional circumstances one has to go to to get a false ban reversed on RuneScape. It shouldn't be that way. So I asked Zortrox to summarize his experience with the support system. This is what he told me. He said that the support system is really easy to navigate, but it's soul crushing when you actually get to the appeal form and realize there's no text box to state anything about your case. He said he realized from knowing about other people's experiences with false bans that his best hope was to grind tweeting at Twitter support hoping that one Jmod who cares would see it and actually take the time to look into his case. The one mod that would sporadically look into these cases was Mod Wealth, but he has since left Jagex and upon hearing this news Zortrox said that he feels players who are falsely banned are even more hopeless now. Zortrox had a lot of great suggestions about how they can improve their support system. But first, let's briefly cover the stories of Jim Shill and Samurai PR. So Jim is a RuneScape 3 player and he plays a ton of accounts. To this day, he has had 44 false bans on his RuneScape accounts. He's been through the gambit of Twitter and Discord with no response from Jagex, other than one response to a video he posted asking if his method of play was against the rules, to which they said it was not. Now, you guys might remember Samurai PR from another video I did about him playing 42 accounts at once. He was kind enough to record some audio talking about his experience, so let's take a listen. I was falsely banned in some of my mining accounts. The only thing I remember that might have triggered the ban was an accidental report while trading my accounts. Other than that, I've been doing the same thing, mining Amethyst for several months and never had any issues. So I would not really know what really caused it. I posted on my Discord and Twitter about the situation and asked for recommendations. I used their appeal form, which came back rejected, and apparently the process is automatic. I explained that issue in a reply to the initial Twitter post, then someone tagged a Jmod to review the case. The Jmod reacted to the post, and some hours later I tried to log in into the accounts with success. No questions about the account details was requested, and no information related to the bans was received. They probably looked up my accounts linked with my main RSN and unbanned them. Since it was solved quickly, it was a good experience, but at the same time it's worrisome that after playing all this time, I lost access to my accounts. I would be lying if I said this has had no effect. It is concerning when something that you put a lot of effort into for a long period gets taken away. So Samurai won the Twitter lottery. And if you're not convinced yet that this is a problem, even Xmod Ronin, when he uploaded his now famous video of making RuneScape's tactical nuke, the alternate accounts that he had to make for that video got falsely banned while he was working on it, so he had to reach out to his old Jmod friend, Mod Archie, to get them unbanned, because his appeals were denied. Now, don't get me wrong, I love this game and I think that the teams are doing a great job in a lot of areas, but support and security are really lacking. Apparently they have 36 people working on support. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe these people are all just working on billing issues because if you have a problem giving Jagex your money, you can actually talk to a real person over email. But otherwise, it's just these automated responses or FAQ pages. It's not a limitation of finances either. In 2018, their end of year financial report showed that Jagex had made 44 million British pounds in profit. That works out to about 60 million USD and Jagex's profits are way up for 2020, so they're making even more than that now. Now, with respect to how they can improve the support system, these are the suggestions that the multi-accounters gave me. Remember, this issue even affects people playing the game in the intended way, but multi-accounters are playing the game in this abstract way that's more likely to trigger the bot detection system because the game was never meant to be played on a bunch of accounts at once. 
These people made for great interview material because they face this issue more often than other people do. So they've really thought about it. Heck, at one point Zortrox was trying to set up a contact point at Jagex that multi counters could reach out to to have their false bans reviewed. No luck on that one, but these are the suggestions. Number one, a real human team to look into ban appeals. Obviously something is wrong with the appeal system when consistently we see appeals being denied and then overturned when the player gets lucky and manages to reach a real jmod who will look into the case on Twitter, Reddit, Discord, whatever it may be. Number two, you should be able to provide evidence on the appeal form. Just so people can state what they were doing in game in these exceptional circumstances like multi-loggers playing 15 accounts at once. Number 3. Make the experience personable. We see too often on Twitter support the bot will just link somebody to the FAQ page when the FAQ page is completely irrelevant to the issue they're trying to get solved. Good support systems? Yeah, they send you to the FAQ page and then there's a button at the bottom that says let me talk to a real person because this page doesn't help. That is missing. You know, one argument that I see come up time and time again is that if they make any changes to the support system, it's going to be abused by botters. And I just don't think this is an acceptable excuse when real players are getting falsely banned on RuneScape and they're losing access to the accounts that sometimes they've poured thousands of hours into. I wonder what your suggestions would be to improve the support system. There's a ton of them all over the RuneScape forums. Jagex has seen hundreds of ideas tossed out by players. I'm sure they could come up with a system that works really well if they would just invest the money into it. But that's all I've got. I did another video a couple years ago on Jagex's customer support. That video talks about some additional insight that wasn't covered in this video. Don't forget to check out NordVPN. They've got a really good deal on that's not going to last forever. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. You know, unbelievable that someone that is playing manually for hours a day on multiple accounts is, is suffering unappealable permanent bans. There's virtually no customer service here. There's no contact with humans, period, with Jagex.